Number one gives us a scatter plot that shows the number of times a player came to bat and the number of hits they had. The scatter plot includes the point 31880. Describe the meaning of this point in this situation. So we know that the X value, okay, or the first value is the at bats. And then the second value, the Y value, is the number of hits. So this one would suggest that um, the batter came up to bat 318 times and got 80 hits. Number two, the scatter plot shows the number of minutes people had to wait for service at a restaurant and the number of staff available at the time. A line that models the data is given by the equation y equals negative 1.62x plus 18, where y represents the wait time and x represents the number of staff available. The slope is negative 1.62. What does this mean in this situation and is it realistic? So remember, slope is your rise over your run. And so that's looking at this vertical distance over the horizontal distance. So remember the vertical in this case is the wait time. So that's suggesting that the wait time is decreasing when the horizontal increases or the staff increases. So this is saying um, customers have a decrease in wait time with like when the number of staff increases. So wait time goes down when the number of staff increases and yes, this makes sense. Because the more staff you have, right, the quicker your wait time should be. So something like that for your answer um, about customer wait time decreasing with more staff and that it makes sense. Then part B says the y-intercept is 0, 18. And does that make sense? So this one does not make, so it, it would mean when the, um, so 0 would be the number of staff. So when there are zero staff members, the customer wait time is 18 minutes. And this doesn't make sense because if there are zero staff members, nobody's going to help the customer. So then that would mean that they'd never get help. So their wait time is going to be infinite. So they're going to be sitting there waiting forever. So this one wouldn't make sense in context. Number three, a taxi driver records the time required to complete various trips and the distance for each trip. The best fit line gives this equation 0.467x plus 0.417 where Y is the number of miles and X is the time. Use the best fit line to estimate the distance the trip would take for 20 minutes and then explain your reasoning. So I'm not sure if this question wants us to actually use the line or if it wants us to use the equation, but it does say use the best fit line. So I'm going to do that, that it takes for 20 minutes. So we go here to 20. And then if you go straight up to the line of best fit until you hit the line of best fit, then you can go over to the distance or the y-axis 
And it appears like that's going to be approximately 10 minutes for a 20 minute trip. So that would be using the actual line. If I wanted to use the equation um, for the line of best fit, then this 20 minutes would be your X variable to plug in. So then you could go Y equals 0 0.467 times 20 plus 0 0.417 and get a closer approximation. So 0 0.467 times 20 gives you 9.34. And then we would add that 0.417 and we would get um, 9.76 minutes. So this one's just a more accurate or closer approximation using that line of best fit where over here we got, you know, just under 10, 10 minutes if we really look right there. Um, so then for part B, if we use the line of best fit, um, to estimate the time for a trip that's six miles long. Um, oh, whoops, and this is not minutes. I have this wrong. These should be miles. So the trip was in miles. Sorry about that. So the 20 minutes got us 10 miles. All right, so now if we're going to be looking at a trip that is six miles long, how long is that going to take us? So if we used the line of best fit up here and we go to six miles, which is the Y coordinate. So this is five. So just above five, you could go over and then go down. And you'll see that that'll maybe take you like 12 minutes, 13 minutes, something like that. So that would be a good estimate. estimate. And that's actually using the line so then if we wanted to use the equation, this time the they give us this the miles, which goes in for our y. So we would have 6 equals 0.467x plus 0.417, and we would solve for x. So we want to get this x term by itself, so we're going to subtract 0.417 from both sides. So 6 minus 0.417 gives us 5.583, and then that equals 0.467x, and this equals 0. So then we've got 0.467 times x, and we want to get it down to just 1x. So we'll divide by 0.467. So then 5.583. 583 divided by 0.467 gives us 11.95 for our X. So then we get about 12 minutes like we did from using the actual line. Number four, data is collected about the number of wins and losses by a random sample of teams that have an animal mascot and those with some other kind of mascot. The column relative frequencies are shown, so they just looked here. So out of animal mascots, 74% have wins, 26% have losses, and then the other types, 49 to 51%. Based on the table, is there an association between the variables? And yeah, we can see there's a variation because this one has 74 to 26 versus 49 to 51. So it appears that animal mascots win at significantly higher rates than the other mascots because these are winning at like a three to one versus this is one to one. So we got 50, 50 versus um, 75, 25. So yes, it appears there is an association. Teams with animal mascots seem to win at significantly higher rates than teams with other mascots.
Number five, a random selection of indoor and outdoor pool managers are surveyed about the number of people in each age group that swim there. Results from the survey are displayed in a two-way table. Based on the data, does there appear to be an association between pool type and age group? Explain your reasoning. Um, and yes, so it looks like outdoor pools are about the same. So you almost have like a 50-50 split here. And you could figure out the actual percent by doing 317 plus 352 to get 669 total people here. And then divide each number by 669. So in an outdoor pool, about 47% of the people are under 18. And then that would mean 53% of the people are above 18. Versus here, if we add these together for whoops, for the um, indoor pool, we have 204 people here. And 41 divided by 204 gives you 20% of people at indoor pools are under 18. And then 163 over 204 gives you 80% of people are over 18. So yes, it seems that the pool type does matter more people over 18 are using um, indoor pools. Or you could say it seems like less people under 18 are using indoor pools. But here it's about the same amount. It's split pretty close to 50-50, but then here four times as many people over 18 are using the indoor pool. Number six, data from a random sample of people are collected about how they watch movies in the genres of action and mystery. Which value would best fit the missing cell to suggest there is no association between genre and how many um, and how the movies are watched? So then we want to take a look here um, at the action movies should be split similar to the way that the mystery movies are split. So if we take 526 plus 147, we find out that there's 673 people here. So then we can do 526 divided by 673, and we get about 78% of action movies like to stream them. And then 147 divided by 673 gives us 22% like to do disc rental. So now we need to figure out a number that would give us about this same split if you like doing the percentages. Um, and so you could just put in 19 here and do 317 plus 19, which would give you, let me change color here. So if we're doing 19 here, then we want to add these two, two numbers together, which gets us 336. So then you can do 317 divided by 336, and that would give you 94%, which is way higher. 94 to 6 is way different than this one. So 19 is wrong. Then you could try 89. So then you would do 89 plus 317 to get you 406, and then do 317 divided by 406 gives you 78%, and then that's going to give you 22%. So that's going to be the number that would make it no association. The other way you can do this, if you don't want to keep totaling things up, is you can take 526 divided by 147. So 526 divided by 147 um, gives you 3.57 as the dividing factor here. And you can just divide each of these. So you could do 317 divided by 19. So if you do 317 divided by 19, you'd get 16.7, which is way higher than that. So then you could do um, 317 
divided by 89 and 317 divided by 89 gives you 3.56, so very close to that. So then that's telling you that that one will work. Because if you did 317 divided by 147, you'd get 2.16, way lower. Um, and then this one would be even lower than that. So that's another way you can do it. They got to divide down pretty close to evenly.